Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jerry. Uh, with me, as they tend to be, we have Maxwell and Terrence. Max and Terry, uh, guys, it's really good to see you. It's good to see that we're all surviving, uh, and that's, that's all I'm going to say. Let's move on to the topic of, of segment A. Exhibit A. Uh, we are going to be uh, checking out. We're gonna, we got to talk about. Uh, we got to talk about the captain uh, who is who is leaving. Uh, I, I was de- debating on whether I was going to call him Yagyelka or Jagyelka, but I don't care right now. It's just like I, I'm just kind of going to miss the guy, you know. Um, my I told my six year old son, "Hey man." Number six is heading out, all right? Jagielka's peacing out, man. He's like, where's he going? Now, like, I don't know yet. Maybe Sheffield United, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, uh, who's going to be captain? Well, uh, that's a long conversation, and we're going to talk about that in another segment. But, guys, there's a, there is going to be a hole, uh, a hole in the club. Uh, just, uh, just, I just want to spit out some Jagielka facts really quick, and then I'm going to give the floor to you guys. Uh, you guys have a little bit. You've had more time with with him, and I want to talk to you about your memories, best memories about about him, what we're missing from him going forward, all that stuff. Okay. Um, apparently, at 15 years of age, started his career with Sheffield United. We knew that, but he started mainly playing as a center mid, which I thought was interesting. Um, helped them get to the top flight in 06, 07, and then he promptly joined Everton in uh, on July 4th of 2007. Uh, highest ever amount play, paid. Uh, played for paid for a Sheffield player of four million pounds. Uh, he became a legit first team player in the 08, 08 09 season. I think his first season it was a lot of, you know, struggling trying to adapt and everything. And then uh, after that, he did his ACL in February two thousand ten, uh, which I can tell you is is the kind of thing that can really derail. Um, and that was against Sporting in Europa League. Uh, but then uh, came back two thousand thirteen, signed a new contract, and Moyes said, "This guy's our captain." All right, that same year, uh, and then wasn't too long after that when uh, you know he's been he was our captain ever since. Uh, he even remained the captain when uh, Roberto <coughs> came in. All right, uh, mm-hmm. uh, he he was in the uh, World, England 2014 World Cup squad, and uh, yeah, he's the most capped Everton player for England. Okay, uh, so I want to shift over the floor to you guys because this guy's just had a, a monster career at the club um i'm gonna start with terry because i've been kind of going to max first early on so let's go with terry you want to talk about your jags memories anything particular stick out or just you just want to rant about jags i want to give you guys the floor to just do what you need to do he's been he's been a great servant at the club hasn't he i mean it is it is time the right time for him to go because at this point I think a lot of players can stay a little bit too long and they can sour. Like Some people would even suggest that he, he stayed a little bit too long from his point of view because he's come out the team and he hasn't been a fixture you know, for at least last season, possibly some of the season before. And he's, you know, he deserves to go out, you know, end his career playing regularly, which you know, is fair enough. As an Everton player, though, he, he has been, for the most part of his time here, a massive, massive player for the club. There's... Some, you know, a lot of people play, you know, the obvious moment um, of where he hit that rasper against Liverpool, like uh, one of the, you know, best um, modern derby goals, not for the significance of the goal or the, you know, the results and all that, which, you know, by the by, the act, just the goal in isolation, like to hit a strike like that away at Anfield as an Everton player, centre back in the 91st minute, whatever it was, brilliant. But, the two the, I, I've got bittersweet memories of, of Jags really because there's two things that I think of I think of and it's from more or less from the same season is when he scored the penalty to send us through to the cup final not the fact that he'd done it but the fact that um, he missed one in the in the UEFA Cup Europa League I'm not sure which one it was then mm. I think the UEFA Cup against Fiorentina not long before that um, and it was a, it took some big you know some big cojones to step up, step up and and you know to shoulder that pressure. It, it was a captain's moment. It was you know you need you know a lot of players might have buckled under that. Going no, I don't want to you know put myself in this position again. But then at the same time, we were just so unlucky that same season. At that point, 
Jackie Elko was in the form of his career. He was our leader at the back. He was the he'd formed an unbelievable partnership with um, Jolie and Lescott, and I think it was his best partnership at the club. It, you know, he had another one with Sylvan Distan, which was good. But I honestly think Jackie Elko and Lescott <clears throat> are our best Premier League centre back parents date as a straight pair. And went into that final and we didn't have Jaggy Elka. We didn't have a few other players as well. But I think even if you just add Jaggy Elka into that team, I think we win that final. And it's always been a case of what if for me with that final because, you know, Chelsea beat us, but we were missing some of our key players and he was one of the main ones. So mm-hmm. I'm sad to see Jags go in, in a lot of ways, but in, in some ways it's, it is about time. He's at the right, he's at that age. It's time to, you know, move forward as a club. And I wish him well. I hope he uh, goes on to get a good club uh, from next season and he gets the game to play in time that he deserves and what he can still offer something he's shown this season when he's come in. He's still got something to offer, just maybe not at Everton with the other centre-backs that we've got. Max? Well, earlier on, I'd say, obviously, the 2008-2009 season, he, I think he won the, the player of the season and the fan player of the season and he, as as a uh, Teddy said, with Lescott, absolutely phenomenal. I think at the time I was only young. I remember when he first signed, he got the number 16 shirt. I got him printed on the back of a number 16 on the back of a shirt. And when he moved to number six, I even got him printed on the season after. I know, um, I know obviously we got knocked out, we got beaten in the final. Uh, Arteta was out as well. He was just, it was just really disappointing. He's one of those, you know, he's the true custodians of the Moyes era. And I think he deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as those like his Baines, Cahill. Arteta and for me it, it again similar to Terry it, it's been to sweet I've, I've grew up hearing in tales of you know you hear the past tales of Dixie you hear about Kevin Ratcliffe you hear about Roy Vernon and uh, Brian LeBowen in particular was one I always heard about you know they seem like true like Everton captains um, having Phil Neville obviously and then I got passed on to Phil Jagiel here while the likes of Chelsea have got Terry and Lampard. Liverpool have obviously got Gerrard. Man United have got Scholes, Neville. Obviously, we're never we were never at that standard during Jack Gilker's time at the club. Or in in that sense, it is quite bittersweet that he was our leader throughout that time. You know, he, without a doubt, I'd argue I'd probably say John Stones is the best centre half that I've seen at the club in recent years. But certainly second best to that Phil Jack Gilker. Um, He'll sorely be missed, obviously, in terms of his leadership qualities. Leadership qualities are born out of those moments of pressure. Um, Finest example being, you know, stepping up against Manchester United. And from there, just seemed to be a great, you know, character to have at the club. Remember when I did my work experience at Finch Farm back when I was, I think, about 13. That was Martin his first season at the club. Remember, one of the first things I remember seeing was him busting down the corridor singing R. Kelly. So he just seemed like one of those characters that you want to have in and around the, uh, the dressing room. So... It'll be missed, but as I said, it's the changing of the guard. What a good story. Yeah. I love I love when you guys pop out with that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's one of those things that uh, it just it, there's something very special, and it, and it tells you when you've got like moments like that that relate to your personal history all the way back. It's just something really cool if you support a club that it, and you're that close to them for that long, and uh, and you have family attachments as well. It's just awesome. Uh, Jack Elka is when I first started supporting Everton I looked at a few players and I said they're good examples of of the club they're good examples of players who speak for the club when they talk it seems like what they're saying is representative of of the club as a whole and they're just overall mm-hmm. attitude I look at Jack Elka he's professional you know, I, 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 my Jagielka moment, the obvious one is that, that amazing volley, you know, at Anfield. But, but you know what? You know what I like? What I, I, because I think that's cliche for me. You know what I mean? Because that was, that was in a draw. What I actually think yeah. for me just epitomized his professionalism was this season. You know what I mean? I look at this season. Look at the mm. fact that he filled in, and he wasn't playing for long stretches. And then when he fills in, he does amazing. He has one bad game because he played back-to-back. Okay? He played against Fulham. Not so good. Right? But he was in a place where he should not be playing a lot of, you know, you know sequential games right now in his career. He's just older. You know? Yeah. But when he's filled in, he's... Well, sorry, go ahead. 
37 in August. You know, he's he done fantastically well to amazing. play at the top level for so long. I think that's a testament to his physical ability. I remember, I think, not not too long ago, he was clocked at one of the highest speeds of a Premier League player. And I've always heard he's an absolute beast in the gym. So, And that's exactly what you want from each Next, I was literally going to ne- go there next about the fact that he doesn't. He didn't seem like he was moving that fast. You know what I mean? When I would, I remember when I when they when they put that out and I read that, I was just like, how, how? He, I, I had no idea he was that fast. And then it was what you were talking about. D, I think it was also DCL came out and said, look, one of the quickest players on the pitch and hardest to get around is is Jack Elka. You know, um, and, and DCL is is not like we're talking about you know a sloth here. He's a quick, nimble fellow. So if he says that, you know, it's, he's kind of meaning it. Um, yeah, guys. Uh, so uh, just to kind of kind of start wrapping up here. Um, number one, I mean, I, I, I think it seems like there's a, a strong possibility he could go, go back to Sheffield United, correct? Possibly. I don't know where else he would go. Yeah, seems to be the rumor. I mean, if you're in his place, do you really want to... Mm-hmm. Do you want to step back to the championship, or do you want to try to play at the top level somewhere? You know what I mean? Like, it seems like if if you're not going to do Premier League, do you consider going to another country? I mean, the championship probably the worst place for him to go because of the amount of games they've got. That you know, it's totally such agree. a hard fix. Uh, if he can't get a Premier League move, which you know he he, he may do, you know, for one of the clubs um, who aren't as stable in the league, who want a little bit more of a you know experience in defence. I think um, the MLS could be ideal for him, just because it's you know it's not going to be as intensive as the Championship anyway, because it's not as many games. MLS got a lot more you know tests with the elements, you know, like the heat and you know like the travel and stuff. But it's not two games a week, which mm-hmm. the Championship is. So it, for me, he's either going Premier League or the MLS. Come on, Phil. Possibly. Come on. Can- I'd like to see him go to Cardiff. I want to. I want to see him and Neil Warnock in the same dressing room oh. together again. <laughs> that would be nice. That's, I was actually because I was reading up on him before the show, and I, I saw where you know there was a chance he could be leaving and Warn like Sheffield before the year before he left, and Warnock was kind of like, no, he's not leaving this year, and he did. You know, mm. uh, you're right. That would be that would be cool. I just don't know if again. I, I wonder if he would do that, like you were talking about the fact that the he's got to look out for his body, in some way, yeah. you know. Uh, you're, I, 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 I did consider MLS as a possibility. I just don't know. I mean, he's just an older dude, and I'm not sure if he. I mean, that's it. It is a quick league. You know what I mean in terms of speed. I don't know about speed of play. Let me just clarify that. I don't, yeah, I don't think that it's um, so much the speed that's the problem. I just think it's the workload. Like yeah. he, he was, he could keep up in the Arsenal game with Arsenal players. He just couldn't play two right. games back to back. I think it's more fatigue thing than a than a you know one off game mm. thing. I guess I I was just talking about MLS though. Uh, I guess it depends on where where he ends up going. You know, I know for Open Cup games, MLS they'll play a lot of young players. You know, to get them experience, it's a little bit like, you know, FA Cup, uh, except mm-hmm. I feel like they take it even less seriously <laughs> over here. Open Cup is just kind of a mare because you're playing against some clubs that are just not the same level as, say, League One. You know, they're just not. Mm. Um, anyway, I'll be really curious to see where he lands up. Uh, where he lands, uh, somebody's getting a, a, a really cool head. And a professional player, and they're going to be able to. It's going to. He's going to be a heck of a mentor for some kids somewhere. Yeah, be a great coach. I could see that. I could mm-hmm. definitely see that. Anything else we want to say about this guy? I mean, I feel like this segment is too short uh, to really say everything you need to say about the guy. But yeah. it's just it's unfortunate. He does. He does. He's in that group of players that deserve to have won something, mm-hmm. but just have ultimately come short. His crown and moment. Obviously, is a you know a win and penalty in a semi final, which you know it's not it's not all that glorious, mm. is it? To be fair, well, um, he's the he was the leader of that Moyes era sort of team, and they all deserved it to win something because they were yeah. they were good enough. They just didn't have the luck when they needed it, 
and he epitomizes that probably as much as anyone as, as the leader of that sort of crop him, you know the likes of him and Kale and, and Arteta and you know less yeah. this than and Pinar and Baines latterly still here but I don't know it, it, it doesn't diminish them for me because you can't you, uh, it's, you shouldn't judge individual players based on the team performance because they didn't have the luck when they needed it but he was still a fantastic player and servant for Everton it's just as you say it, it's unlucky that he didn't you know he got injuries when he you know he really could have avoided should have you know wanted to avoid them and you know certain things could have went differently but what can you do there's been other great Everton players who didn't win something for us but they're still great Everton yeah. players yeah. and he's not it's not like he plays a glamour position either you know what I mean he's just not uh, yeah uh, anyway uh, we're gonna we're gonna miss we're gonna miss number six. I don't know who our new number six is gonna be. I guess we'll we'll be finding that out soon. Could be uh, could be Yuri Mina just g- grabs that one. Who knows? Or or maybe a Kurt Zuma if he finds his way back. Who knows? But you know, it's too soon. Too soon. We'll figure it out later. Too yeah. soon. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, any anything else on Jags? Are we good to move on? All right, well, we're going to move on. Uh, Phil, if you do come to the States, um, prefer it be somewhere around North Carolina. Just saying. All right? D.C., Atlanta, something where it's not a long drive for me. Thanks. All right. Uh, that's it for our JAG segment. If you've been digging the videos, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. We sincerely appreciate it. If you want more Terry, well, there's just not a whole lot of other places you're going to be able to get a lot of Terry over the summer for preseason because there's not a lot of Liverpool Echo fan jury uh, happening over the summer. Uh, are there any more of those? I don't think so. Uh, I haven't had one for a while. It, it does tend to slow down a lot in the summer just because there's not as much uh, topics to mm-hmm. talk about. But be back new in the season, new season. Keep an eye on it. Otherwise, just uh, watch his Twitter. He has wit. Uh, he, he wants to show you. Uh, additionally, you know, uh, in the streets. Strong um, gif yes, game, he's, usually. He's, one of the, he's the strongest gifer I have, I have ever seen. All right? He's got, he's got a gif for gif. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> so, Max, uh, you need to follow Max. Keep an eye on his Twitter. He'll tell you when and where he's going to be. He, uh, he puts out a lot of content. So uh, keep an eye on the Toffee Blues website where often you will find his thoughts and views on the blues. Um, but usually he's just, uh, again, spouting his, his uh, knowledge, his Everton knowledge on Twitter. So keep an eye on that. And uh, that's it for now. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to talk about uh, leadership at the blues now that we've lost a damn fine captain. All right. Come on back for the next one. <laughs>